Okay, I'm going to, I uh, guess you could say, let some of the nonsense that rattles around in my brain ooze out for the YouTube community today. And what's bouncing around and has been bouncing around in my head for years and years are these fantastic little Alenco Power Gainer compression amplifiers. Um, they're actually very rare. Uh, very hard to find these things. I now have, I think, six of them. I'm just trying to think, counting the radios I have them attached to. Yeah, because I just got this one recently. Um, uh, pretty much when one of these shows up on the market, I scoop it up. <laughs> and it's one of those, uh, I don't want to say it's no expense spared, but I really, really like these. Um, now, a lot of people like, uh, like the Demco modulators. I personally like this Alenco Power Gainer compression amplifier uh, better than most of the other ones on the market because as you can tell by all of the knobs and switches on the front of it, it just allows you a lot more control. Now, um, what my thoughts are is basically reinventing the wheel. So these things haven't been made for decades. That's why there and there weren't a lot of them made to start with. That's why they're hard to find. Um, now there's not really a lot to them. Two tubes. You know, there's a six B A six, a six C four transformer, a couple of capacitors, a bunch of potentiometers, and a cabinet. You know, a couple switches. And there's not really that much to them. Um, one of the things I really like about these, uh, you can connect these. In multiple ways to a radio. So this one, I already had the bottom cover off, and there's the top cover. Just had it on to show you what it looked like. So there's the inside. You can see somebody already scribbled on in there what the tubes are. So you know, there's a 6BA6 and a 6C4. They've got your transformer, and then a few components on the bottom. You know, main filter cap, some resistors, a couple capacitors, but there's really not a lot in here. So, um, you know, it's a fairly simple circuit, but it, it does a lot. And this one has been modified. I don't really like the way they modified it. <laughs> they added a jack to the back of it. Okay, so what you have here is, is then the way they had this one set up, they could plug their microphone into this jack and then plug this into their radio. So it would be in series with their microphone. Now that was not the preferred method of using this, but it works just fine. Um, matter of fact, in the instruction manual, which probably is even rarer than the unit itself, um, for years I used these things and just kind of had, you know, first thing I had to do was reverse engineer it because I knew what it was. I just didn't know how in the hell to hook it up because <laughs> I had no instruction manual. So, you know, I basically had to sit down, draw a schematic out of it, reverse engineer it and try and figure out how, how were they was it planned on being used? Because when you received these things, they didn't have this jack in the back. That's, that's like I say, that wouldn't be normal. You'd have had two cables, two coax cables coming out. Um, their preferred method of hooking this up is actually bypassing some of your audio and in, uh, mic input circuit and using this because not, on, this, not only is this a compressor, but you have to remember it's also an amplifier. So this has about 20 dB of audio gain. Um, but like I say, you can use go in series too. So now there, I ideally what should have been done, there should have been a jack stuck on the end of one cord and then, you know, for a microphone to plug into and then the other end would go into the radio, but yeah, it's got the jack neither here nor there. But my thoughts are remaking these. Um, cause like I say, there's not a lot to them. Parts really wouldn't be that bad. The two tubes that are in this thing, the six BA sixes, uh, Hell, I personally have, God, I've probably got 150 of these things left. Um, that was a very, very popular tube in military equipment. So I have a, you know, a small stockpile of Jan tubes or, you know, mil, mil spec tubes. Um, and same thing with 6C4s. Now, I'd, if I was to start making these things, I'd probably buy a bunch more. But those were also available uh, mil spec tubes. Just a lot heavier duty construction uh, and cost a lot more back in the day because, like I said, they meet military specifications so but they're both available and cheap they don't cost that much 
um, the most expensive thing if I if I do make these if there, if there's enough interest and that's why I'm making this video just to try and get the word out um, people if you see this even if you're not interested in one but you think you might know somebody who might be ask I'd just be interested if, if I think I can find probably 20 people that would be interested in buying one of these I'd actually sit down and consider making them on a uh, on a limited you know production run I guess you could say. Um, now, they're not going to be cheap. I can tell you that straight out right now. It's not going to be a 1995 special item. Um, I'm going to use nothing but the absolute best money can buy to make them. Um, the Transformer, of course, now granted, it's not very big, but still. The Transformer is going to be the most expensive thing in this thing, next to the cabinet. Now, uh, this is another kind of a question. Um, what people would want. Now, I could do something similar to this, just a painted cabinet, silk screen front, and that's another thing. It's not going to just have a bunch of goofy, you know, printed stickers on those stupid thermal labels. I will get them professionally silk screened, the face plates. So, you know, it, it's going to look like it came out of a, a factory. But, uh, you know, would you want it like this, in just a little box, you know, doesn't really look like much it's not much to look at other than yeah it's got a bunch of knobs on it or I was thinking um, I think would look a lot nicer would be to make it out of make a, a polished stainless steel chassis and leave the tubes and the transformer exposed so if you're familiar with uh, uh, audio amplifiers um, tube type audio amps um, you can buy kits today even um, it's very popular for a lot of those that's exactly how they're set up. So basically, you know, that's what you would see. Basically, two tubes sitting, sitting on top of the chassis and a transformer. And I would probably, I mean, I, it doesn't have much for electrolytic capacitors, but it's one of those, you're also going for the aesthetics, for the looks of something. So I could actually use a small uh, aluminum canned uh, transformer multi-section uh, capacitor and have that sitting on top of the chassis so you know you'd have two tubes a transformer and a cap sitting sitting on top um, but it's it's just a lot more aesthetically pleasing than looking at eh, kind of a plain old box doesn't matter what color you paint it it's still just a box with some knobs and switches <laughs> um, but so what exactly does this do and why does this have so many knobs and switches compared to your normal uh, you know mic amplifiers or compression amplifiers that of people are used to. Like I say, the most popular being the Demco modulator. Um, that one, there's a lot of those. You see those all the time, um, and they're starting to bring a lot more money because as people find how, how they, they do, you know, improve the, the sound quality of your voice and give you a little bit of extra punch, people are starting to scoop them up and, you know, hoard, doing like I do, they hoard stuff. <laughs> um, so what this does, I'll basically I can go through basically the theory of operation, you know, kind of in a nutshell. What the manual tells you is the the six BA six in this is a remote cutoff pentode, and the the six C four tube in here is a rectifier tube. Um, the six BA six is used as the audio amp stage, and that's what gives you about twenty dB of audio gain. The six C four is used in a circuit that's connected to the plate of the modulator inside your CB or ham radio. So you can be used on any type of transceiver. But that's hooked up to the modulator uh, through an audio coupling capacitor. Now that audio voltage from the modulator in your transceiver is fed back into the 6C4 in this unit and the 6C4 rectifies that AC voltage. Um, the DC voltage that has then been rectified is filtered through a RC network inside of this and is applied to the uh, number one of the control grid on the 6BA6 in this in the form of a, a negative bias or a gain control voltage. The, the amount of voltage um, or the amount of control bias is regulated by the compression voltage uh, potentiometer here. Um, the audio input voltage is fed into two control potentiometers on the on the bottoms here, okay? So the compression in out switch, which is this one, that's a two, two position selectable switch, um, connects one or the other of the input gain controls, okay? So either this one or this one to the number one grid of the 6BA6. When the switch is in the compression in position, which it's in right there, um, this control becomes the audio input control. 
and the compression control voltage is supplied from the modulator to limit the gain and therefore the peak amount of the 6BA6. The limiting of the peak output voltage of the 6BA6 um, then that limits the modulation peaks of the transmitter or the output audio peaks of, of you know, the receiver. So the output gain control, which is this one here, um, is in the plate circuit of the 6BA6 in here. What that does is that controls the amount of audio from the plate circuit of the 6BA6 into the transceiver. So that's why it says output gain. So that actually, and nor normally what you would do is, is you run this one in the number 10 position. Um, in normal use, the compression in uh, gain control and the output gain control are both run at wide open or 10. And then what you do is, is use the com compression voltage um, to feed back to the modulator tube and a transceiver through the compression voltage control. So actually, this is the one you would use the most. So you just, and most of the time, that's what I do. You know, if I'm using this with compression amplifier in, I'll just run both of these at 10, and then I can regulate it with the compression voltage. Um, now, that's the nice thing, though. It's tunable. So I can lower this a little bit, maybe a little bit more compression voltage. Maybe I want a little bit of total output gain. I can increase the, you know, the compression in gain. Um, like I say, that's what makes it nice. It's really tunable, so it's, you know, unlike a lot of things where it's one control on and a knob, may not work great for all radios. Some of them might want, you know, might work best in, you know, let's just say those positions, where the next radio might work best in you know, these positions. So, you know, um, now if you flip this over into the compression out, this box basically just operates as a mic amp. That's it. The uh, does not act as a compression amplifier then. So the only thing you're doing then is, is basically using this as a... Uh, uh, an adjustable mic preamp, more or less. Um, so, like I say, it's not really complicated. I know that mishmash I just told you would be extremely confusing if you don't understand any tube theory, but that's not a problem. But like I say, and I'd have to make up some clear instructions on how to, um, as far as setting this up. Like I say, for the most part, you usually have output gain at 10, compression in gain at 10, and you usually run this right around 4. That's usually the standard, you know, when you have the com compression in. Um, that works really well in most cases. But like I say, that's one of those things what you can do is, like with any microphone or any type of audio processing equipment, you know, ask, find somebody that you trust, that knows you, you know, ideally in person. They know what you sound like in person. And then they can give you a good, you know, find an empty channel and do some radio checks and play, you know, you play with the controls. But uh, like I say, if, if there's any interest, I think I might actually be interested because I, I wouldn't personally wouldn't mind having two or three more myself. <laughs> so like I say, there's not a lot to it. It's just going to be time consuming. Now, like I say, if I do make these, I have two options. I can make it a box with knobs, doesn't look like much, or I can do a fancy that would be basically about half this height, maybe about this tall, but be wider, you know, might maybe be like that wide. And about, I guess about that deep, but it would be solid, polished stainless steel, mirror finish. Um, now, I would get those made. I've got a friend that owns a machine shop, um, specializes in uh, sheet metal, actually, you know, making stuff like that. Does a lot of government contract work, but uh, what I can do is, is I get him to punch out the holes, like for the tube sockets, um, the transformer, you know, the wires and the screws. So basically, I don't want to have to do any drilling myself. Uh, I don't want to have to do any machining. Now, I could do it myself. Yeah, I could, you know, attach it and bore the holes out on the milling machine, but it's just time-consuming, and you always stand a chance when you're machining, you're doing any type of rotary machining on a piece of polished metal, even if it has that, you know, anti-scratch material, that blue film over it. Um, if a burr gets caught and gets pulled around, it can make a scratch. So what I would do is, because if I, if I have him make them, they'd be punched. He can do it on a punch press, which is a perfect smooth-edged hole, and it's exactly the same every time, and there's absolutely no chance of scratching the surface of that nice polished stainless steel. Um, now, when I get done with it, it's probably going to be as heavy as a tank, because like I say, I'm not going to build this thing light. It's going to be built with the best components money can buy, best transformer, best controls, switches, 
uh, Jan, you know, military tubes, um, all the capacitors, you know, and, uh, will be probably from like CNE for if I use a can cap, I'll get uh, professionally made uh, CNE can caps, the original twist tie style that rivet, you know, rivet down to the top of the chassis. Um, luckily, there is still a company that makes those, um, you know, sprag orange drops, the best, you know, best of everything. But uh, like I say, if there's interest, um, if there is enough interest, I'll, uh, you know, how much is it going to cost? I don't know. <laughs> Um, I'm going to have to sit down and figure out how long it's going to take me to assemble them. Um, you know, like I say, the tubes aren't going to be that much. Pots aren't going to really be that much and switches. Um, transformer is going to be the biggest dollar item. Actually, that and if I get uh, a can cap, you know, on top of the chassis. Um, the chassis is going to be the most expensive part because that's going to be shipped out. But I think that would look really nice, especially if you're going for the look, you know, nice stainless steel with the tubes sitting out so you know they're exposed um that's why a lot of people like their you know high-end tube type you know audio or stereo amplifiers that's uh why a lot of people have switched to those and that's, there's so many of those kits are available and people like them because they look cool they do <laughs> you know instead of everything being hidden inside where you can't see it um that's kind of you know nowadays the only um, one of the reasons people use tubes is is because it's retro. It is cool, so you want to see the tubes. So, uh, like I say, there's just a little bit of what's been bouncing around in my head. I got this one, and before I uh, rebuild this one and put it into service, because it's not going to sit on a shelf. It's going to get stuck on. I haven't figured out what radio to hook it up to yet. But uh, if there's any interest, so if there is, leave a comment. Um, if you want more than one, tell me how many you might be interested in. Cause like I say, I'm looking for at least 20. For, for it to be worthwhile for me to go through the hassle of, uh, you know, drawing up blueprints for, for my buddy's shop to punch him out, um, you know, for him to make those in his shop, um, you know, there's that's going to be expense. And then, like I say, I can I can then get prices on the transformers. Because a lot of times if I get, and that's another thing, once you get to the, like, 10, 20, 50, or 100 quantities, you start getting price breaks on stuff. So, uh, you know. But uh, if anybody's ever used one of these, you know what they do for your audio, man. If you've used a Demco modulator, this is the cat's meow compared to that thing, man. Um, don't get me wrong, I like the Demco modulators. They sound really good. Those, those were, a, were great, too. I just like these because they're so much more adjustable. Um, and you can still use it as a mic preamp if you're not using a compression amplifier. That's another advantage of this. You know, it's not just a compression amplifier. You turn it off, and then it's just a box sitting on your table. So, you know, um, basically you have three options with this. You can turn it off, turn it on, you know, compression out, but you still have the mic preamp, or you can compression in. So let me hear uh, your thoughts on my ideas, and uh, might have to uh, actually get these little critters into production.